Well, hello there. Welcome, welcome, guys. Pretty should be pretty clear from the title of today's video, the idea we're going with. I've done a few tier lists about Guild Wars 2. Specifically, we started with elite specializations. We rounded up the new wave that's come with End of Dragons. We looked at Heart of Thorns, POF. But, you know, what we didn't do, and a lot of people asked this, was to just do the core classes, like the baseline professions, do a tier list on what is the best and what is the worst. So that's the idea. Now, this is going to be really hard and really complicated because... Depending on what area of the game you're looking at, there's a million different ways you can interpret these professions and think of them as brilliant or not. But I'm going to give you guys my take. Now, I'm actually using someone else's tier list that they've made here. This is Big Boy Dig You. Um, so he's actually added an S plus tier and he's got a trash tier on there as well, which I will endeavor to use. We're going to call at least one profession trash and at least one S plus. So let's see how this goes. Uh, this is going to be really hard for me, guys. Because whether I'm thinking about like. PvP or World vs. World or PvP is hard enough, let alone then the idea of like my experiences in dungeons or like in the open world or in fractals and stuff. I mean, let's just get started here. Mesmer, first of all, um, it probably really, really well actually demonstrates this because one of my favorite times on Mesmer ever has been in PvE dungeons, specifically farming the last dungeon of the game, Ara. I used to do a lot of low man or our stuff. Mesmer was amazing in there. You could use portals to jump over cliffs. You could use, you know, they had, especially in vanilla bands, they had like a copious amount of reflects that a lot of the classes, other classes didn't have. And reflects were just generally brilliant in Arar. You had all that amazing stuff in the early days where quick cutness was a lot rarer and just having access to time warp felt really fun. Uh, you had lots of stealth. You had like a blink so you could trick through stuff. I mean, there was so much cool stuff there. One of my favorite experiences ever in Guild Wars was farming Arar and a Mesmer. But then let's look at another side of the game. Mesmer is trash for leveling. Mesmer is horrible feeling. And even to this day, I mean, once you get elite specializations and stuff, that can change a bit. But in general, I, I remember very clearly when the game came out, I was playing Ellie in the in the betas. And I'd really fallen in love with how uh, Elementalist felt. I'd always known I wanted to be a Mesmer in Guild Wars 2. Mesmer was actually my main in the original game. So when actual launch came out, when we were in the head start, 2012, I tried Mesmer. But I hated it in the open world. It was so boring. And to this day, I think it's basically the worst leveling experience you can have. So we rate you really down there. Now let's talk about PvP. That's its whole other own kettle of fish. In the early days, I remember having so much fun on old shatter builds and the classic interactions with Portal, which were incredibly fun and basically don't exist anymore. Nowadays, most of the time when I play Mesmer and PvP, it's very, very boring kind of like simplistic builds that really don't reach those heights, you know? Uh, so where do we put Mesmer overall? There's so many places I can think of it. To, be, to tell you the truth, I'm going to give it an A for now. I'm going to give it an A because... I think across the board, Portal has been a really fun and really unique thing about the profession. So that's one reason why I kind of rate it up. Reason number two, I've always liked the ways in which you can support people on Mesmer, specifically in the early days with quickness and time warp. Funnily enough, uh, when Chrono really came into the big swing of it, I wasn't actually that much of a Chrono player. And Chrono kind of replaced a lot of those elements of Core Mesmer. It is Core Mesmer rating today, not Chrono. So maybe I'm a little bit too generous with that, but I've always liked that feeling of even like mass invising people and stuff. I've enjoyed that. Number three, now this is probably one of the biggest reasons. Mesmer to, feel, Mesmer to me feels like the Guild Wars class, you know? It's not totally unique, I'll give you that. You can rattle out any number of obscure or weird things in other MMOs or in D&D &D and stuff that feels kind of mesmerish. But to me, Mesmer was always something really special in like the MMO landscape of Guild Wars 1's era. And it felt like kind of the special thing that they pulled through into Guild Wars 2. I remember it was the last profession that they'd announced, uh, you know, and they did the big dupe. Oh wait, was Engineer the last one they announced? I think Mesmer was the last one. And they hid it from us as the bard. There's just a lot of special stuff with Mesmer. I'm not really too into the pink fairies and, and butterflies and rainbow aesthetic. I'm really not. And, you know, in the original game, there wasn't even too much of that there. But uh, they really ran with it in Guild Wars 2, you know, a ton of the effects that like, caused butterflies to float around you and stuff. So it probably would be S+, plus if it wasn't for some of those other little things that kind of drag it down to me. I'm going to leave it at A. I think that's a pretty good rate in there. Next, we have Necro. So Necro is kind of funny. Necro isn't unique, like as, you know, a poster child of, of, of the profession. But Necro does have a really cool aesthetic. I like dark. I like grim. I like underworldy stuff. I like ghosts. I like the undead. So Necro to me is just, well, it's delectable. It's brilliant. It's one of the best classes out there. Necro doesn't really offer any anything too unique or bring to anything too special to the table in terms of like, you know, when you think about like Portal that the Mesmer had. Um, so I think it kind of loses some points maybe. I also kind of don't like, you know, ArenaNet decided 
the elementalist was going to be like the squishy mage and necro was going to be like the atrophy mage like the tanky or like the, the brick wall kind of mage i'm not saying you can always be tanky on necro obviously but that idea and just how like their core mechanic works as it's almost like a tanky thing a second health bar for you to sponge and soak up damage that whole side of it I'm not sure I was ever too much a fan of. Like, I get the idea you take life force from people and you siphon health from them through blood magic and vampirism and stuff. I get that, but I kind of wish that Necro had a totally different unique mechanic. Maybe something more specifically related to minions. Which, let's talk about that too. Minions are one of my favourite playstyles to go for in any PvE kind of like RPG scenario. If I'm fighting monsters, I love playing with AI. And so, I really loved minions in Guild Wars 1 too. The minions in Guild Wars 2, they kind of killed in a lot of ways. Corp exploitation's gone, minion caps to a certain degree are gone. The idea of sacrificing your life to regen them is kind of gone. You know, most of them don't drain health over time. It's not like as flexible, there's not as much going on anymore. So, I, it kind of loses a lot of points for me there. I think minions always could have been so much more. Um, but I still do love the class, and I do love that it's there. Oh god. I don't know. Alright, we'll put it at B just because it's not as unique as Mesmer and I do value like the unique mechanics and stuff there. Oh, but I do love Necro. Oh, this tier list having the S and the S plus and trash is going to make this really hard for me, I have to say, guys. I don't know. I'll put it at B. I do love the themes of it. Vampirism and <sighs> life stuff. We'll, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. And I'll, I'll tell you another reason why I'm going to leave this down actually a bit. In fact, here's the thing that we should probably think about in this video. How these classes feel now, you know, how often are you actually just a Mesmer versus how often are you just a Necro or rather elite specializing? I feel like they both have a place being a core class, but at the same time you nearly all like Necro actually feels like the better one to stay as a core class in certain formats at this point. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep this for now. This is going to be rough guys. I'll tell you next we have Ellie. Now, I know if any of you guys have been watching my video for any length of time, you'll know that most of my footage, most of my time, especially in the early years, was on Ellie. I actually considered Ellie to be my main for probably a good two and a half, maybe even as far as three years. I don't think I really still considered it my main by the time the first expansion came out, but for a long time, like, I was an Ellie player. Um, and it's kind of the other half of this Mesmer story I, I told you. When I, I decided Mesmer felt or awful to level, I swapped over to Ellie. And it was the coolest goddamn thing. What really clicked to me for Ellie was the the achievement rotating. I mean, that's almost so boring and banal to say because that is what the class is. It's, it's rotating through achievements. But specifically, Dagger Dagger, open world Ellie. Swapping into fire to get your little fire dash, then going into air for the ride the lightning, kicking people back with an updraft. Uh, there was a lot of really, really cool stuff in there. Actually, to be honest, you'd do that combo in reverse so you could dive in on them in fire after updrafting them. Um, and then taking that into PvP and you delay after the updraft because they were probably going to stun break, dodge roll, or expect you to come dashing in. Ah, uh, landing big meaty fire grabs, using Channing Earth. The first build video I ever made, now you can go back and look at this on YouTube. It's this terrible build where I, I combined Valkyrie stats which is high crit damage but no precision with arcane elementalist stuff so arcane skills guarantee you crits so you don't need any precision so you just go all power all health all crit damage and then you use arcane to land the crits and I, I loved that old build that was kind of some of the, my earliest build craft with guild wars I had like combo that with uh, churning earth and stuff and I remember getting a 20k damage hit was the coolest thing so I don't know what can I say I have a lot of nostalgia for Ellie Ugh. It feels like it has to be an S+, right? I don't actually know whether I agree that it is definitively the best. I mean, look, if we're going to be really dry and boring about this whole video, everyone's just going to be in B, because I do genuinely think there's a lot of parity here. It really comes down to theme. If you watched my new player guide recently, I basically said, look, just pick which one feels like the coolest theme to you. Um, but, you know, if we're going to go with personal experience and stuff, I mean, it's got to be S+. Maybe I'll change this. But, uh, I mean, it was my main for a long time. And even to this day... You know, some of the Elite Spec con content has really clicked for me. I'll say that the Ellie Elite Specs kind of have bored me. Uh, how often do I play Core Ellie, though? Core Ellie's actually really kind of rubbish. It's one of the weakest core things that you can play at this point. I mean, there are some sort of fringe areas you can do it. But if you're an Elementalist, you're probably a Weaver, or you're probably a Tempest, or once the new expansion comes out, you're going to be a Catalyst, right? How often do you play Core Ellie at this point? So maybe we rate it down. On those grounds... Oh, but historically I played it so much. Ah! Oh! I'm going to put it at S. I'm going to put it at S. I know what's going to happen here, guys. We're going to have a problem where I'm not going to have something in S plus or trash, and we're going to have to move it later. All right, let's move on to the mediums. So what's my take on Engineer? 
Engineers are a lot like Ellie, really, with the kits, in as much as you can rotate through lots and lots of skill bars. Problem with Engineer is then you're dedicating utility skills uh, to actually be able to do that. And I really don't like the feeling, and I know you get compensated by the tool belt, because, you know, then you've got your F abilities. But then, what are you being compensated on the F abilities for? Well, you're just kind of losing those. And also, tool belt skills, generally speaking, don't feel as fun as full-on utility skills. I mean, sometimes they do. Toss Elixir S feels pretty great. In fact, throwing Elixirs in general back during Classic Balance was awesome, where, like, there were really big weird effects, but they were randomized. You know, you'd either get a smoke screen or a wall of reflection. And they both do kind of the same job, but in slightly different ways. Anyway, kits in general, I, I, I don't really like playing with kits. I always, you know, for a long time I fell in love with grenades, and I'd say Engineer was awesome, because I love grenades. And do you know what, I love the idea of being a turret NG that uses the tool belt kit, and you know, you, you smack the turret to heal it, it's like a cool weird interaction. But none of those playstyles have really come through, it's just, uh, grenades in particular, like it's a fun idea, but it's just click, 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 click. Even with specific ground target settings to like alleviate that issue for you, it, it's annoying. And I don't know, I don't like swapping in and out of them, something about the rhythm or the flow of it feels a bit rubbish. Obviously, Engineer isn't only kits, but, you know, especially when you take the Elite Specs away, Hollow is one of my favourite things ever. If you look at my POF tier list, you'll see Hollow's right up there. As far as Core Engine is concerned, I don't know, guys. I, I don't rate it that high. One of the things I wish that ArenaNet did was add a little bit more incentive for players to play Core NG, like through those tossed versions of your elites, like Mini Mower, where you can mower a whole zerg of enemies at once, in theory, or, you know, the Orbital Strike and stuff. Those are interesting skills, but none of them are tuned well enough for it really to feel ultra valuable. So, honestly, Core NG, I think I'm going to drop it all the way down to D here. Um... I feel bad for doing this. I feel bad, man. I don't know. I feel bad for putting them high. I feel bad for putting them low. But Core NG, it just feels like it doesn't have enough flash to it, especially at this point in today's balance. And I missed out on it in those earlier, earlier days. Again, I like the themes and the ideas. There's also, okay, there's another thing that I have a bit of a problem with NG, and that's that it has the alchemy line burned into it. Engineer is in a lot of ways, it's like the jack of all trades profession. You know, it's like a bunch of random themes and ideas that were left over that they couldn't squeeze in. Like, maybe Alchemy deserved to be on Necro, but they already had a really clear idea of Necro. Maybe Alchemy deserved to be on Ellie, or on, on Mesmer, or maybe even, you know, uh, I'm not gonna say Guardian. But maybe it deserved to be elsewhere, maybe it deserved to be its entire own class. But they didn't really have the scope for that, so... Engineer, te a technologist getting Alchemy? It kind of works. But I don't know, I feel like uh, there's certain like little theme areas of it, of this, which didn't quite line up for me. So yeah, as much as I like explosives and stuff, we'll put him down at D. Oh, I'm sorry to the NG fans. Next, we have Ranger. Ranger, I think you could argue, is the best class, just in terms of like pure content and depth. Because Ranger gets something special that no one else does. Ranger gets pets that they can actually, you know, interact with in the open world to collect them like Pokemon. And you get, you know, lore and information about every single one. Each one of the pets has a bunch of its own abilities and, you know, like nuances and interesting things. There's a whole other layer to the build craft if you're a ranger. Now that layer of the build craft isn't that great because the balance of pets has never been properly looked at. Half of them are bugged and so on. But, and by that I mean like the quickness bug. But it is there. You know, so I, I think I could argue that range is really high. Also, just for me personally, like I said with Necro, I like minions. I like stuff like that. I like pets. I love playing with pets in Guild Wars 1 as well. I don't like fighting rangers in World vs. World in PvP. I don't like their emote spam. I don't like the whole longbow force spam knockback nonsense. I don't like getting drilled and instantly blown up from 1500 or 1200 range. So, I don't know about that. Also, for a lot of time in the early years, I feel like the balance between shortbow and longbow was kind of rubbish. Nowadays, though, it's pretty good. I don't know, I like Ranger. I think it's good. I'm gonna put... Why is, why is Ellie not at S+, plus? what was the argument we just made? I think, I think I'll put Ranger at S+, plus just because... And you can feasibly still run core Ranger stuff. It feels complete. It's fun in the open world. It's one of those biggest recommendations I'd give to a new player. Also, like, if we're talking, I know I'm trying to ignore the elite specs, but if we consider, like, its paths later, you know, you do have here a really cool, uh, like, specialization into the druid, which feels thematically appropriate, but in gameplay completely turns the whole thing on its head and lets you be a backline support. I really like that as well. And I don't know, I encourage. You can't really compliment just Druid for that. It's based on what Core Rangers like too. I, I I don't know. I think this is a really recommendable, really cool class. I like Core Ranger, definitely. Um, so he goes quite high up there. Next we have Thief. 
Thief's a weird one, because in terms of theme and aesthetic, I also really like it. You know what one of my favourite things about Thief is? It's really weird and silly, but it's the whole key thing. You know, we've got a blade crossed with a key. You know on Character Creator, when you're in a Thief, you see like the key, the key swinging in the background. You get like the black and white kind of theme. I really like that. The thing is, I've never had a great Thief on my account, because I made the mistake. I think, anyway, of making a Char Ash Legion Thief, which which makes sense, but Thief, I don't know, the big clunky hitbox on a Char, for some reason it's never, like, it's quite a precise style of gameplay that I can never quite see because this big bulky character swinging around. I very recently on my account made a human Thief in the hopes that it will click with me more. The truth is, this class never truly clicked with me. It's not because I actually think it's a bad class. I think it's just because I haven't put the time in with it in a lot of ways. So I'm actually going to put that to C. That's going to if we get if we're doing it this way, everyone's going to get a, a rung, I suppose. I'll put thief at C. I do like thief, but it tends to be when I just jump in on a thief without thinking about it much, I end up just like spamming like pistol three or something. And in the competitive settings, I've always struggled with thief. I've always disliked it. I've always been leery about too much stealth and too much disengage potential and too much mobility. And thief has all of those, right? So I kind of want to put thief in the trash, but I'm, I'm going to leave it at C because I appreciate a lot of other areas of it. Okay, so uh, so yeah, we'll hold it there. I also think there's been some questionable ideas with his elite spec, or rather dead eye specifically. So, uh, but again, that's not called thief. So anyway, yeah, we'll leave it at C. Alright, so that's your mediums. Rounding out now with heavies, we've got Warrior. Oh, what do I say about Warrior? Look, I think Warrior embodies something about Guild Wars, which is beautiful. Which is this idea that you can flex, like, as far as Buildcraft's concerned, you can flex into whatever you want. You know, most MMO players, they're going to look at Warrior and they're going to say, Oh, okay, I have to be on the front line. Oh, I have to be a tank. Oh, I have to be sturdy. That's not true, you know? I love how Guild Wars, ha people don't credit it enough anymore, I don't think. But the idea that you can have any number of weapons at any number of ranges and customize your playstyles in a ton of ways, Warrior is the perfect embodiment of that. It has so much customization going on. I like its special mechanic as well. It's very simple, right? The whole idea behind Warrior is, you know, low skill floor, but high skill cap, right? That's certainly how we used to see it in Guild Wars 1. And, um, you know, it, through that, it's a very simplistic class, specifically with Core, Core Warrior. But I think it's really fun too. And I think it's just clean and it works and it makes sense. I do enjoy Warrior. So, uh, oh God, where do we put it though? I've had so the thing is in PVE, how many amazing experiences have, have I had with it in PVE? How many people watching this video are just thinking about the fact that they've been a banner slave for all these years, you know? I don't really have any begrudging feelings about that because I've never tried to main warrior, so to speak. I've never felt pigeonholed like that. But, um, I don't know. I can see how that maybe rates it down a little bit. Oh, all right, fine. Okay, it doesn't come out too big in my mind. I'll put this one at a C here. I'll put warrior down. I feel... <laughs> This is an awful tier list. I hate this. I hate this. What you guys have got to understand is, is like, there's a million ways we could rate these. We could do this tier list purely just on like skill flow, like how fun it is to play this one build in this one area, and that's the mo main thing I've done. So there you go. That that's what the tier list is. I mean, really, I always think you guys should just. This tier list is better done by like a first impressions from someone with like ten hours. Ah, all right. Only a couple more left though. Okay, I'm putting Rev in the trash. There it is. Rev's the trash tier. Now, why is Rev the trash tier? Okay, there's a few things. First of all, theme. All right, now look, what I'm about to say is not a hard science, okay? It's not a fact, all right? It's just my personal feel with this. I wanted a through and through, edgy ass, complete Dark Knight character. That's what I wanted for the third profession. That isn't what we got. I feel like... Revenant embodies a problem arena that generally has which is that they're constantly trying to hedge their bets And they're constantly trying to appeal to a wide as wide a range base as they possibly can So instead of getting a dark knight, you know the opposite of the guardian instead of getting this cool guy We got two specializations that vaguely feel like that 
Um, yeah, it's a special, not elite specialization, just specialization. I'm talking about Malix and I'm talking about Shiro. And everything else they did, Jarlis, Ventari, and of course when it came out it was Herald, so you had Glint in there. None of them really had that vibe. I remember very clearly when that first blog post came out talking about the Revenant. They had like this whole paragraph in there specifically to explain, oh, you don't have to make it edgy. Look, here's one that we've put transmutations on so it looks really flowery and it's got rainbows everywhere. And I just thought, why are you hedging your bed so much? You know, it's like too many chefs spoil the soup. You've corrupted the idea at its heart because you weren't confident. And I've always been sad at that, you know? Yes, I can play a Shiro plus Malix Rev, I suppose. One of them's kind of purpley feeling, one of them's kind of green feeling together. Maybe I feel a bit like a dark knight. But I think Arena Net could have done better with this. I think like the frosty elements and stuff, they could have done better. Now, that's that's theme, alright? And that's not I know every other people are gonna have another opinion on that. Let's talk about mechanics though. Revenant was supposed to be like this nostalgia bait thing about Guild Wars 1 energy management. You know, Guild Wars 1 had a, a very different system, uh, a whole layer to the build craft energy, and managing it was a big part of the game, and you had bonds and so on. Does that really come through and feel great in the Rev? I don't think so. I think it just feels really weird. I, I don't like playing Rev a lot of the time, having to balance my cooldowns and energy as the way that ArenaNet set it up. Zigzagging back and forth as you swap legends, starting at 50% but it can overflow. All those things, I, I get what it is. I know how to play Rev. I've played plenty of Rev. I just don't like how it feels. It feels, here's the word I would use to describe Rev mechanics and, and the flow and feel of Rev, tangled. And like there are very specific flows you can work with. Um, and you know, it can be obscenely strong as well, don't get me wrong, but just the general principles behind it, I, it never clicked for me. It was something I was really excited about and it never clicked for me. Finally, here's the other big disappointment with Rev, which means it goes in the trash, is Rev was the one example we have of them adding a new character creator reason to the game since 2012. They added a new class. It's only ever happened once. They don't add new races. They haven't added any other new classes. The one time and as they did it, they added level 80 boosts from Heart of Thorns, and they did nothing to address all the tomes that were already in the game. So, this good thing that could have been a revitalization, and this sense of a bunch of new people coming in a great moment for the game, was ruined because they didn't pay attention to the other stuff that the, the game was doing and how it was structured. So what did we all do? Did we all really go out on amazing adventures when Rev came out? Or did we instantly just make one, boost it to 80 and play Heart of Thorns on that and it was over in the blink of an eye? I think most people ended up doing that. I think they ruined a really cool potential idea. Um, and I'm still, I'm still a little bit sour about that. So those are three big reasons I'm gonna rate it down. And I hate to put it in the trash because the truth is, I really like the balance of how it feels as power play styles versus comedy play styles. I really think it is pretty... I, I, I think even, you know, they went back and added these special buttons for the core classes. Like this, uh, Re the Revs one that gives you a little bit of extra energy. I feel like feels quite fun. I do actually play core Rev reasonably regularly. Um, but I'm going to put it in the trash because those other three things, uh, they get to me, man. So, uh, so <laughs> down it goes. Finally, we have Guardian. I mean, what do I say about Guardian? Guardian's interesting because it's perfect for the game. Right. When I think of Guardian and I think about like when they were originally announcing the classes and they showed what Monk could become and their new idea for the Trinity and how you control the battlefield with these light walls that prevent people walking in certain places or projectile bubbles or healing areas. The idea of a stra strategic positional like leader of the battlefield, that was very, very fun to me. And the ideas behind Guardian, that you can control where people go and put, shield people in those specific ways, is awesome. I think a lot of the time as Guild Wars 2's gone along, Guardian never really quite hit on those strategic highs, because Guild Wars 2 isn't really a strategic game, it's an action game more than anything else. So Guardian kind of fell for that. But I mean, it's got a perfect theme, it perfectly complements the rest of the, the, car uh, the cast of uh, professions we have. People do go into the game wanting to be that paladin archetype. They do want to go into the game being that holy archetype, that healer archetype. It's not necessarily not necessarily something I was desperately looking for in Guild Wars, but it has to be there, right? And um, and I think it's got a fair few fun play styles in with it too. For sure, Guardian balance I think has been quite stagnant for a long time. Like I remember Guardian wouldn't ever get that many patch updates compared to the other classes, but I think really that's a testament to just how great it was from the off. I'm going to put it at A. I really do. I think I'm going to put an A. So there you go. That's my tier list. Now, let me see here before I round out the video. Do I really stand by this? 
So we got Ranger at the top because of pets. We got Ellie because of my personal experiences with it. And come on, just the, the flow to this goddamn class with the achievement swapping is brilliant. Not to mention, again, just like I, I complimented Guardian, Ellie has an archetype. It's got a style, you know, that, that cast a damage character. Again, the idea of having valuable ranged playstyles in Guild Wars kind of struggles a bit, but it's there, you know. Um, Mesmer for its uniqueness and legacy through Guild Wars plus unique interactions. Guardian because it's just all around. What can you complain about with Guardian? What is there to complain about with Guardian? There's nothing. I mean, it's perfect for the game. It rounds out the class. It's excellent. It's just not a personal favorite of mine. Um, Necro because it has some amazing themes, but doesn't maybe... I kind of want to put Necro up. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, oh, this is this is dodgy, putting, putting Rev here. I kind of think I should swap these two. <laughs> I think I should swap these two, but I don't know. Actually, I am going to swap them. Okay, NG goes down. NG goes down because it's even less uh, appliable than Rev. And... Um, and I really love the idea of turret playstyles and stuff, but they've never been used in the game except for AFK farm stuff, which sucks. I think that if I could put one massive balance patch in the game that was there to, like, encourage new players to try out the game and give them a place and stuff, I'd look at, like, turrets and NG and some of the things that this purports to deliver, but doesn't. Um, so, yeah, all right, one last minute swap there, because I like Rev. I do like Rev. What can I say? So, uh, NG's in the trash. Ooh, uh, last minute switcheroo. There you go, guys. That's uh, my desperate rambling attempt to do a tier list of the Guild Wars 2 professions, which, can I just say again, I think these things are all fantastic. I really do. And it's very hard to rate them. Realistically, I'd just put them all in B and say, look, go, go wild with them, because I think that the class design is one of the ultimate strengths of Guild Wars. Um... Maybe some of you guys disagree. Let me know in the comments how you feel. If you guys want to give me any other ideas of tier lists, uh, I'd love to hear them too. I was actually just browsing this website, seeing other tier lists that people had made this morning. And there's some fun ones on there. So as long as people are still liking these videos and I see that the viewership's there, I'd love to keep going with them. So thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Um, and I'll see you in the comments or over on Twitch, where I'm probably live right now. Whatever's going on next. See you uh, very soon for another open world build, by the way. Uh, I'll come maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. Catch you next time, guys. Oh, yeah, and um, we obviously do have the elite specs from End of Dragons to reassess since the most recent beta. I think I'm going to wait till launch for those because who knows how much they'll change again, and I'll get a lot better of a hands on then. So we'll put a pin in that, and the ultimate Royal Rumble of all elite specs and classes will uh, we'll probably follow the launch of the X-Pack. I feel like that's the best way to do it.